Negative. Militia's everywhere, Tam. Told you this would get messy. When it comes to stealth action games, the Splinter Cell franchise is about as genre-defining as it gets, but there aren't many video game series that have a fan base as split as this one. The release of Splinter Cell Conviction and an unveiling of Blacklist showed a much more lethal and action-oriented take on the series. This and the ousting of a certain longtime voice actor gave plenty of cause for concern for fans. Ubisoft has seemingly fought an uphill battle to gain the attention of longtime fans fans of conviction, and even newcomers. But it's out now, and I'm going to give you my verdict. America is under attack, and a group known as the Blacklist Engineers have only one demand. The U.S. must bring its troops home or the country will suffer increasingly devastating terror attacks. Under presidential directive, Sam Fisher returns to active duty and commands the newly organized 4th Echelon to stop the Blacklist. The prose is typical of a Tom Clancy title, so it's not always the most coherent tale, but a terror threat is all the motivation you'll need to see yourself through each mission. Luckily, the antagonist is sinister, convincing, and has a believable motive. If only he had just a little more screen time. But the controversial topic remains, the new Sam Fisher. Longtime voice actor Michael Ironside has been replaced by Eric Johnson. While the younger replacement makes some sense given Sam's newfound speed and agility, but Johnson's performance comes off as mostly humorless and a bit generic in comparison to the gruff delivery from Ironside. This won't be a big deal for casual fans, but longtime players may not take kindly to this almost de-aged Fisher and may ultimately wish he was an entirely new character. But this is almost entirely made up for by the gameplay. This is a return to form for the series, but at the same time, dishes the plotting pace of Splinter Cell on the original Xbox. It combines what made classic Splinter Cell so great, as well as what made Conviction such a fascinating, if controversial, experiment. Ubisoft designed Blacklist around allowing you to play with Splinter Cell the way you want to play it and built your tool set around three distinct play styles. You could avoid detection in guards entirely as a ghost, silently kill enemies as a panther, or be loud and in the open with assault. This is your op. It's entirely up to you. I came to Blacklist expecting to use all three play styles in equal measure, but came out barely using assault at all seeing that it's very hard to play this like that initial E3 unveiling. For the most part, the level design accommodates stealth the best. In fact, there are some sections that won't allow detection or the ability to kill enemies at all. The developers have been touting the variety of playstyles for months, but this occasionally comes off as a moot point. So it's a good thing the stealth is better than ever. If you miss the days of avoiding detection, shooting out lights, and hiding bodies, Blacklist allows you to do it all once again, and boy is it satisfying to employ hand-to-hand -hand takedowns. Are you it? <laughs> Sam's moves are far more efficient and fluid than ever. When you get caught, it's your fault, not the game's. Complementing these abilities is an expansive set of gadgets and weapons. Noisemakers, tri-rotor drones, sleeping gas, you name it, Sam's got it. And those sonar goggles are a godsend. Even your guns are far more customizable than ever, and the mark and execute function from Conviction is still just plain awesome. The stealth gameplay is incredibly satisfying, but there are some tacked on elements like first person shooting or sections where you operate a drone, but these are few and far between. Like any stealth game, there is some trial and error, but there was never a point I felt the game was obnoxious on the normal difficulty. The frequent checkpoints and quality of the mechanics make it a joy to get through the more difficult sections and elude new enemy types like armored guards and dogs. The normal difficulty is perfectly balanced, but if you want Blacklist to be as punishing as the series past, you can always play on the perfectionist difficulty. Ubisoft truly caters to everyone, longtime fans or newcomers. The bottom line is, if you can't enjoy Blacklist gameplay, you probably don't like the genre. It doesn't hurt that the entire adventure is much longer than Conviction's short single-player offering. It's not as cinematic as that entry, but the gameplay is much more robust and takes you to plenty of interesting places and political hotspots like Iran and even Guantanamo Bay. 
Tying everything together is the Paladin, your mobile HQ that serves as your gateway to the single player levels and multiplayer modes, and where you can upgrade your gear and chat with the crew. It's actually quite reminiscent of the Normandy from Mass Effect. That's all for now. Okay, we'll sync up soon. There are some minor complaints regarding the structure, namely that the two-disc nature of the 360 version caused some issues, but even if the game only included the single-player portion, it'd be worthwhile and highly replayable. Yet Blacklist is the most fully featured stealth game around, and includes a full suite of multiplayer modes. First is a full set of fourth echelon missions, some of which can be played alone, but you can bring a partner along for the ride in all of them. These give you plenty of opportunities for teamwork so long as you bring the right teammate. One mistake can ruin the mission. These levels are worthwhile if you have the right friend, but many of them either force you to stay completely hidden or entirely lethal, which diminishes the sense of freedom you have in the campaign, and the ones that you can play alone are too frustrating when played that way. It's simple. Bring a buddy. The other end of the multiplayer spectrum is the return of the legendary asymmetric multiplayer mode, Spies vs. Mercs. While there is Team Deathmatch, the best modes pit the Spies, who play similar to Fisher in the campaign, against the Mercs, who play from the first person in various objective game types. In either Spies vs. Mercs classic, the spies are tasked with hacking terminals while the mercs have to stop them with lethal force. In another mode, Extraction, the mercs must go into enemy territory and bring a briefcase of intel back to their base, all the while being hunted by the other side. While the amount of maps may be a bit small, Blacklist multiplayer is incredibly addictive and intense. Mercenaries have heavy armor and easily have the upper hand in a firefight, whereas the spies are sneakier, far more agile, and are almost unstoppable once they're up close. While the focus is primarily on the objectives, the cat and mouse gameplay makes actually getting a kill far more satisfying than it would be in your average shooter. Add in a healthy amount of unlocks, and this is a multiplayer offering you could be playing for weeks or even months. It bears mentioning that this is a truly team-focused experience. If you don't have a friend to bring along, at least bring a mic. Communication is critical to your enjoyment, and I've had good luck finding players who are willing to coordinate. The presentation of Blacklist is mostly excellent. Whether you're lurking in the shadows or in broad daylight, the environmental detail is solid once you've installed the HD texture pack. If only the same could be said for the character models, which look a little nasty in comparison to everything else. But special credit has to go to the animation team. Sam Fisher's actions look effortless. The mark and execute ability in particular, should you decide to use it, never ever gets old. Michael Ironside be damned. This is the Splinter Cell game you've been waiting this entire console generation for. Even if the story is somewhat run of the mill, and the new Sam Fisher can't hold a candle to his former self, Blacklist is a return to form while improving the core experience drastically. Whether you enjoyed classic Splinter Cell, Conviction, or are a newcomer to the series, this one is well worth your time. It's the most fun I've had playing a stealth game on the 360. Kill me, don't kill me! Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who are you? CIA? Oh, you have got to be fucking shitting me!